Hey everyone, it's Miss Mayorga again. Here is a video for lesson six on random numbers. So make sure you have your notebook open and you have uh, logged into code.org. Uh, remember, you can just type in code.org in the browser to get into Code Studio. Um, to access your notebook, you can go to Schoology, uh, go to the resources, CS resources folder, and it should be in there. All right, let's get started. So uh, lesson six, oops, there we go. Lesson six, essential question, how can we make our programs behave differently each time they are run? Learning objectives will be to generate and use random numbers in a program and to update a value stored in a variable. All right, we're gonna be working on uh, lesson six, bubbles one through seven. Bubble six, uh, you get to choose one of the activities to complete. I'll go over them, uh, I'll go over both of them. And then bubble seven will be graded. I'll get you started on that, but it'll be up to you to finish it. Uh, bubble eight is an optional challenge. You do not have to do bubble eight. All right, let's get started. Code.org, lesson six. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. As you know, my I sit by my window and my window overlooks the street. So I see like all the cars and all the people coming by and I get easily distracted as people come by. All right, bubble one, overview. So again, we're gonna be learning about random numbers. Let's go ahead and continue. All right, random numbers. You have a new block in the math drawer called random number. If you make your drawings with random numbers, it will look a little bit different every time you run your program. You can learn about the block by hovering over it in the toolbox and choosing see examples. All right, so again, down here you have our toolbox. Right now you can only see drawing blocks and one math block. So you can switch back and forth by clicking on those sections, those drawers. Do this, run the program several times to see how it works. All right, let's go ahead and run the program. Run it a few times. And what do you notice? What do you notice is happening to the circle? <laughs> okay, hopefully you said the circle's moving, right? It's moving around, it's changing positions. It's moving back and forth, left to right, right? It's not going up or down, but it is moving left to right. And let's take a look at a code to see what's going on. So we have our background, tomato color. And then we have the fill color for the circle, which is orange. And then we have our ellipse. For the X position, for the X parameter, we have a random number block. So the computer is choosing a random number between 0 and 400 and using that number for the X coordinate. Oh, excuse me. Um, so every time it chooses a different number, 100, 50, 700, no, not 700, 400, 1, 20, right? And it's going to shift the circle to that position. But for the Y, it's staying at 200, and the size is staying at 50 for the width, 50 for the height. Instructions. Let's see, what do we need to do? Change the numbers inside random number and run the code again a few times to see what happens. So we're going to change our range here. We're going to change our minimum and our maximum. Right now, it's 0 to 400. Let's go ahead and give the computer a different range. Mm, you can choose, but make sure you don't go more than 400, because if you go more than 400, the circle will end up over here. We won't see it. I'm going to go with 50 to 150, right? So the computer has to choose a random number between 50 to 150 and use that as the X coordinate. Go ahead and reset and run. You can show grid to, so you can see more clearly that the circle is staying within a specific area. For me, it's staying between this line right here, 50 to one, what did I say? Oh, 150. Where is that? Uh, right here, 50 to 150 between these two blocks. So it's a pretty small area. If you want to increase that, you can. Maybe I'll do 50 to 250. All right, and that's it. Let's go ahead and continue on. Click finish, continue. Okay, random numbers. Here's the same sun from last time. Right now, the only the Y coordinate is random, but you can make the X coordinate random too. Excuse me. Okay, do this. Use random number, use the random number block for the ellipse's Y parameter so that the circle is drawn in a random Y position too. As long as your circle is appearing at random X and Y positions, you can move on. All right, so we're gonna grab our random number block, go to the math drawer, grab the random number, 
And when you move this into the workspace, you're going to see that it highlights. Every time you move it around, it highlights something. Whatever it's highlighting, if you let go, it's going to replace that. So we want to replace the 200. That's our Y coordinate right now. Go ahead and make sure it's replacing 200. Now our first parameter X and our second parameter Y are random numbers. Let's change this so that it matches zero to 400. Okay. And go ahead and run the program again and check out what happens. This time you should see that your circle moves up, down, left, right, all over the place, right? Because both the X and the Y coordinates are random numbers each time. All right. Let's go ahead and click finish and move on to bubble four. And we have our smiley face again. So let's check out what we need to do. Variables and random numbers. Variables can be assigned a random number too. This lets you save a single random value so that you can use it as many times as you want in your program. Do this, assign a random number to the variable eye size so that, so the eyes, oh, they double, they, sorry, I just realized they, there's a mistake here. So the eyes automatically change size every time you run the program. Remember, the left and right eyes should always match each other. Cool. Let's check out what we have. Right now, if we run the program a few times, we won't see a difference. The eyes are always the same size, which is 27, right? It's defined in line one, var eye size equals 27. And that's what the ellipses are using for width and height, 27. Now we're going to replace the 27 with a random number block. Go ahead and drag that random number into 27. And we need to think of a range to use. So we want the eye size to be between what and what. Go ahead and think of a range. I'm going to use 25 to 100. You're welcome to use another range, but I'm using 25 to 100. Once you change your random number range, go ahead and reset and run the program a few times to see what happens. As you can see, the eye size changes every single time, <coughs> but both of the eyes have the same size. 100 might be a little too big. If you want to bring that down a little bit, you can, but I'll just keep it there. All right, go ahead and click finish. Continue. And remember, you can always pause the video. I'm just going along, pause the video, and then unpause it when you're ready to keep moving, All right? Changing variable values. These two flowers use a single variable to store their petal size, but the value stored in the variable changes in the middle of the program. Run the program several times to see how it works. All right, run the program. Nothing's changing, right? Nothing's changing. Let's go ahead and discuss the code together, and then change the program so that the flowers have random petal sizes in the image. I'm gonna collapse my instructions. Let's look at our code. Can you tell me, based off the code, what is the size of the petals for the smaller one and what is the size of the petals for the bigger one? Hopefully you found it and said 30 and 60. Yeah, so if we look at line four and line 15, uh, the variable petal size is getting the value 30, then they're drawing that first flower with that value and then they change the value of that variable to 60 and another flower is drawn with that value. But what we want now is for both of these to be random numbers. So let's go ahead and grab that random number block, drop it in there, replace the 30 and replace the 60, line four and line 15. So for the petal size, this one was 30, the smaller one was 30, and the bigger one was 60. So we probably want random numbers between a little bit less than 30, a little bit more than 60. So I'm gonna say 20 to, I don't know, 80, 80. We'll say 20 to 80. If you wanna go with a different range, go for it. I'm gonna do 20 to 80. And I'm gonna keep it the same for both of them. Now we can run the program. Reset and run, reset and run. And you can see that the flowers each time have different petal sizes. Sometimes, most of the time they're different. Sometimes they look very similar. And that's it. 
Right, so we're giving these petal sizes for both flowers random sizes. Go ahead and click finish, continue. All right, we're almost done. Bubble six and then bubble seven. Bubble six, you get to choose one of these activities. I'm gonna go ahead and go over A, then I'll see how we're doing on time and I might go over B. Um, I might do that one a little bit more quickly, but A, if you wanna do A, let's go ahead and go over that. I wanna try and squeeze bubble seven into this video so you don't have to do two parts. Okay, modify the planets. You have learned how to randomize things, so it's time to put all the knowledge to use in the scene. Make this scene more fun, give the planets random sizes so it's always changing. And for added fun, randomize the positions a little bit. I'm only gonna focus on randomizing the sizes, right? So I'm gonna show you how to do one of these and then you can do the rest of them. Let's start with the yellow one. Right here is line two and three, that's our yellow ellipse. Um, Alrighty, it's 11. I feel like we're going to have to make two videos. Oh, well, uh, this is the yellow ellipse. You can see the position 0, 200. Um, but we want, what we want to do is change the size. So to access uh, the size, the width height, you're going to click on this little arrow just one time. That's going to open up the width parameter. Here's where we're going to add our random number. Random number. And the default for each of these is 50 by 50. So we can go a little bit smaller than 50. I'm going to go with 25 to 100 for the width. So the computer will automatically choose a random number, 25 to 100 for the width and height. And when you run the program, you'll see that the yellow circle changes sizes each time. Okay. And you can do the same thing for a few more circles, all right? Uh, I'm going to do it again for cyan. Click that right arrow just one time. Drag that random block. Drop it in there. And I'm going to use the same range. If you want to use different ranges for each circle, you can. But that's it. So I'll go ahead and do it for one more. Uh, pause the video, do it for one more, and then keep watching the video. I'm going to click finish. Continue. Uh, there is B. I feel like I'm going to run out of time to do seven. I'll quickly go over B. B, if you want to do B, is asking you to move the rectangle randomly to different purpose, uh, different uh, positions. But hold on, I already did this one. <laughs> I need to start it over. Right now, the rectangles are not lining up, right? So what we need to do here, if you can see in line three, the X coordinate is using the variable X position, which has a random number of zero to 150. But for the purple and the fire brick rectangles, it's not using that same variable. So we want to delete these random number blocks and make sure that both rectangles are using the same variable. That way, every time that the computer chooses a random number, it's going to use that same random number for all three triangles. Rectangles, not triangles. I cannot spell position. I'm typing with one hand too. Um, and now when you run the program, you should see that it moves together. All right, sorry if I rushed this one. I'm trying to get to bubble seven because I only have like a 15 minute limit on my on my videos. And I want to make sure I don't get cut off at the end of bubble seven, which I'm worried I might because there's only a minute and a half left. Okay, rainbow snake. This program draws a rainbow snake. To make the snake draw differently every time, you'll need to use random numbers. Do this, run the program several times to see how your starter code works. So as you can see, oh, I think I already have some blocks here. Let me delete this. As you can see, um, the uh, snake has three circles that are moving up and down. And your task is gonna to be to add three new different colored circles that also move up and down. So you need to use a random number block. Don't worry about the challenge, All right? Let's take a look. My question to you is what is staying the same each time that an ellipse is drawn? What's staying the same? Hopefully you said random number, right? That Y parameter staying the same. The width and the height is staying the same. The only thing that's changing is our x coordinate. How much is this increasing by each time? 40. Yeah, so it's increasing by 40 each time. So the next circle that we draw, we have to increase the x by 40. I'm going to help you with the green, and then your task will be to draw the blue and the purple. All right, fill color, green, ellipse. Uh, 180 plus, 100, uh, plus 40 is 220 and random number 190 to 210 50 by 50. all right and that's it so just do it two more times 
Okay, the video's almost over. I will see you in class.